Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, let's start off by controlling from here. And wow, that's quite a tilt actually. And uh, seeing if this actually works properly. Uh, hmm. Well, it could use some more downforce. It, I mean, I think if it was heavier, it'd probably be better off. But at least it seems... Uh, let's try dock, docking mode. People always suggest using docking mode. 1.1... Uh, Here, let me let me try and turn it and have it go in a different... Oh no, docking mode is not good. Docking mode is not working for me right now. Yeah, this is working better. Could have sworn just uh, controlling from the right place would be the thing to do. Wow, it's not even breaking very well. Uh, traction control. Let, let's just uh, go back to one for that. And motor is when you press forward. Such choices. I really don't build rovers that much, as you can tell. Um, brakes. Yeah, I think actually stronger brakes would be really helpful right now. There we go. Now we're slowing down. Alright, so brakes better. Friction control. Yeah, let's just override all the things and see what happens. So I'm going to take brakes off. I'm going to try and go forward. Lots of wheel spin. Okay, well now we can go up. That's that's a start. Oh, and I only changed that for this, uh, for one of the wheels. Shoot, I need to change it for all the wheels. Override, override. Override, override. Yeah, that's overrided. Override, override. Drive limiter. I don't know why I'm limiting the drives for. So this one hasn't been done, that's why it's turning one way. Okay, now we're not limiting the drives. So turn. Turn. Okay, um, I still feel like we should probably not overdo things. But it seems like we have better control now. Let's go over to the carbonite mining test. Drive on over there. So I think I checked out the mission control before coming here to the Caribou, and it seems like we've got some station contracts to work with. Oh, going too fast, I think. Um, so I think we will aim for that. We will build a Kerbin orbit station and a Moon orbit station, and that will be our next goals. I do need to check out where the planets are and whether we're in time for a trip to Duna or not. That would be sort of an important thing. Well, uh, this is still a little bit dodgy. At least I feel it's a little bit dodgy. But at least it's moving in the right direction. Can go uphill. That's very important. Alright, so it's parked close to our other assets. And we'll leave it here. Okay, taking a quick look at the planetary alignments. We're slowly catching up to Duna. So we'll uh, we'll get there soon. It's probably still a little while longer, maybe enough time to do a moon mission, certainly. And then also Jewel will be coming up. Jewel, it's a 96 degree angle, so we'll catch up to that soon after we get the Duna angle. So we can look forward to both transfers, and I want to send probes to scan for resources to both locations. I think that should be easily doable at this point. So let's take a look at our contracts to see if there's anything that could uh, help fund those missions. Of course, we will do the station contract in this episode. Okay, so here we are, and, um, well, launch Minmus Station, launch Kerbin Station, and launch Moon Station. It doesn't have any deadline, 
looks like. I mean, uh, we we have to pick it up, but after that, it doesn't. The offer will expire, but after that, we don't have a deadline. Um, let's take a look at the Kerbin Orbit Station. Uh, it wants it below 250 kilometers. Situation orbit with module docking node, so we'll need a docking port. Count at least one. Obviously, we only have the small docking ports right now, though. Supports four Kerbals. Have either solar, I, I think it's either one of these, so probably just solar panels for now. We don't have fission reactors yet, but we need a science lab on board and a cupola. Uh, oh, a cupola is optional. Science lab on board. Um, I don't think we've unlocked a science lab, actually. Let me take a look. I mean, we can get it started. Uh, it doesn't mean that we have to, like, totally complete the station yet. We might do it in parts. But, do we have a science lab? Science lab, mobile processing lab is here. I think that's the science lab they mean, the mobile processing lab, right? Wouldn't make any sense otherwise. So, we'll need to... Okay, well, we'll need to unlock the SPH, not the SPH, the R&D building. Uh, let's see. Well, that's, that's affordable. Let's unlock it. Okay, but now we need more science. We need more science so that we can unlock that. So, 130 science. Uh, we had that little hopper on the moon, All right? So, we have it drilling for cathane and refueling itself, and it can do science in multiple biomes. Let me go over there and maybe do some more science with it and transmit it. Let's try that. Oh, uh, let's pick up the contracts before I forget. Yeah, I mean, let's just do these things. We'll have a Kerbin orbit station. We'll have a moon orbit station. And we'll have a Minmus orbit station, eventually. Um, conduct orbital survey of Ike. Wow, it requires all these little studies. We have seven years to do it. I, pl I guess Ike would be a good one to start off with. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more convenient in some ways than Duna sometimes, certainly to get off of. So we'll have to bring all this stuff and uh, do high orbit and low orbit. At least six of the following, well, we'll do all of it. Okay, uh, let's pick that up as well. Uh, we have contract room, yes. Okay, so suddenly we have a lot of contracts. Science day from space around the moon, uh, might as well. Okay, yeah, we're, we're almost full up on contracts. Let's go to our assets on the moon and see what science we can do. Okay, so have we done a visual observation of the east far side crater? No, we haven't. So we can transmit 18 data just like that. Polar lowlands. I don't remember seeing that one before. Let's, let's visually observe that. Uh, oh, it's just poles. That says surface biome polar lowlands, but it just counts as poles. Okay. Huh. Now it switched to poles, but maybe there is a polar lowlands thing. At least we filled that one contract for science data from space around the moon. And yes, we've gotten the science. Highland craters. Oh, we haven't gotten Highland Craters before. Northern Basin. Everything looks a little gray and really cratery. No kidding. Okay, um, so we've got some signs from that. Wow, we we're already at 111.8. Maybe we can finish it with this if we can hit another biome or two. Highlands we've done. Poles we've done. Really want to try polar lowlands again. Let's try it again. Yeah, polar lowlands is a separate thing. Okay. Don't know why I didn't catch it last time, but we got it this time. All right, I'll, I'll do one hop with that little little cathane probe. Okay, so here we are with the carbonite mining test. It's fully fueled. It's got 1,427 meters per second, which should be enough to get to another biome. Let's uh, retract drill. Retract drill. Let's make sure we don't go to a place without any carbonite. That would be bad. Resources. Carbonite. 
Maybe you should just head straight south to this polar region with a high concentration. There's also that patch there. Yeah, let's just head south and land there. We'll make sure we're over the poles. Alright, that is the plan. What kind of science does this have on it? This has the surface ablation laser light imager, that's what it was. Also, it's got these solar particle. Uh, let's review the data. It's not worth transmitting. A, a Kerbal's gonna have to pick that up. Okay, so more surface ablation testing. Hopefully that's worth enough. We might have to pop over to an uh, extra location as well. Okay, SAS on, and up we go. It actually shows here which biome I'm currently going to be landing at. That's good. Okay, so this uh, burn countdown is counting down pretty quickly now. We're still over highlands though. Where are the poles? There we go, poles. Alright, well, I'll prefer polar lowlands, but I'll take poles if necessary. Gah on the fly start LFO conversion as long as our electric charge holds out with the carbonite conversion going on our delta V is going up that's always nice so obviously I don't wanna like land on that craterous area I want to land over here somewhere and of course, converting carbonite also makes a lighter load because the fuel to dry mass ratio is improved. Okay, we are on the surface. Let us do the science first. Collect laser data. All right, 24 signs, let's transmit that. That still won't quite get us 160 science, but we can uh, use the probe around Minmus to get the rest. Okay, let's uh, drill for carbonite. Oh, we've got sort of a polar thing with the sun. Instead of going up and down, it sort of goes sideways. That's interesting. Don't really see that often. But yep, that's the poles for you. And it gets a little hop every time I come out of time warp. That's not good for base building if it uh, the entire base hops when you come out of time warp. That could be dangerous. Uh, I think... I don't know if the conversion happens when I'm not present. I assume it should. Okay, I think I'm just gonna let it be. Let me turn to the Minmus probe to get a little bit more science so we can unlock the necessary technology. Alright, I got a bunch of science from the Minmus probe, so now I have a total of 285.8 and I want the mobile processing lab. Hopefully that's what we need. And I'd also like a docking port. The cupola was optional, but I'd like a larger docking port. Is that around here somewhere? That looks like I need 160 science. Is this the large docking port here? I mean, the regular size docking port. Actually, I don't remember where the regular size docking port ends up. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, so we do need a little bit more science to unlock that. But I guess we'll put the small docking ports for starters. And we'll have little small go-around vehicles and stuff like that, perhaps. Okay, let's build our first station. 
Okay everyone, well this is Curb Station 1, and it's got quite a lot of fancy features. First of all, obviously the science lab, and we've got little mini docking ports on the side here, the hitchhiker storage container, um, so we've got space for four Kerbals, we've got a remote controller, we're not gonna launch this crude, uh, we've got inline um, stabilizer, so we do have some reaction wheel control and you saw the commutron there, battery power, solar panels down here, uh, here is the light support tank and looking here uh, for a crew of six which is the max it's 46 days but for one it's 277 days of supplies with just this tank I think that will do for now uh, it looks like the max habitation time for six crew is 92 days. I think that's what this says here. Yeah, habitation is 92 days. So the supplies we've got is half of what they would need to uh, survive up there for the full length of time that they can. Pretty quick. I mean, uh, we'll have to add more modules. We'll just have to have more modules. It's fine. There will be more modules. But we don't have docking ports. We'll have to add the larger docking ports using KES, I think, is probably the plan. So we'll have Kerbal's EVA out and add stuff to the station, hopefully, if that all works out. Uh, the fuel tanks are all integral to the station. So once we launch it, uh, the station is this entire body here. Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't put fins on because that would look weird. I just put wing strakes in order to bring the center of lift down a little bit but it's still pretty high I don't know what FAR is doing with that but it's doing something anyway um, we will try and bring the engine back though so you can see we've got a decoupler we've got fuel lines to the heat shield this is the heat shield and then here's a fuel tank uh, so that the engine can retro burn we've got RCS tanks here monopropellant and little RCS thrusters and parachutes and the controller in there. So yes, we've got all the things. Uh, we've got boosters, they will be recovered using the parachutes and I've also decided to try out these radial reaction wheels. They don't provide that much but every little bit counts. They're actually pretty expensive. Uh, they provide one torque a piece. Okay, so that is the situation. Do I know if it'll work? No. But I hope it will. It does have enough delta V and it can lift off of the ground, so that is a good start. Alright, uh, I think we've got everything. It doesn't really check off the stuff. It doesn't say have a science lab on board. It doesn't confirm that I've got that. Also, uh, one troublesome thing is that the reflection on the, on the science lab seems to be messed up. So that's annoying. Cupola is optional. So, well, let's give this a go. Uh, there are no Kerbals on board. And I will hope to expand on the station later on. It's just the bare bones. And we will see where it goes from here. Okay, here we are. SAS on. Throttle is up. And that's all ready. All right, here we go, ignition, and launch. Off we go. Smart ASS in control. Looking good so far. I'm a little bit worried that booster separation is gonna happen around the transonic region and all of that. It seems to be slipping a little bit here. There, there are definitely bad oscillations. Shoot. Okay. Oh, okay. Well. All right. It is all falling apart. Crikey. I guess. Let's see if I can get the engine back anyway. And the boosters. Actually, we could probably recover the boosters and the engine. Once it stopped doing all this. Okay, staging off the boosters. Off they go. And... Uh, don't knock in the stuff. Okay. 
I don't think that the parachutes on here are good enough to handle all of this. That seems unlikely to me, but maybe we can give it a go. Okay, I'm not feeling like I can carry all this down with me, so I'm gonna do set. Actually, it's actually. Oh, that didn't look right at all. Ah. Uh, see, that's not right. Uh, I think we just lost everything. I don't know. I mean, uh, darn it. That sh stuff should have been recovered. Oh well. Mistakes were made. Okay, well, obviously we needed fins. I don't know if this is good enough. I don't dare tweak scale the fins. So not just the wing strakes, but actual control surfaces in this case. But uh, our center of lift is still above our center of mass. So that's annoying. I guess it's because of the nose cone? Maybe we could have a better nose cone that doesn't do... Well, it doesn't do that much, actually does do a little bit though. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll try this out. Okay, here we are. Throttle up. SAS on. Let's hope for a better situation this time. I've got the fins on. I didn't put them on like some sort of decoupling thing so that they could be shed. I'll just have a Kerbal take them off, I think, and store them. Maybe that's the best way. Maybe we could actually use KS to uh, and KIS to store the fins and bring them back down in a KIS container could be something to try right so there are possibilities there are many possibilities we still haven't gotten the drills so I, I don't know what we can do practically speaking but we'll see here we go ignition and launch I think maybe I'll manually control it this time. I think Smart ASS is pretty bad about the whole thing. Okay, going through the transonic region here. We're now supersonic. There's some lag gear. Yeah, we'll probably be shedding the boosters close to max Q. That's not great. Try and keep it on prograde. Set. Okay, well, boosters are off. And they crashed into each other, so we couldn't recover them. Great. Great, great, great. That's not ideal. We have plenty of Delta V though. I hope the bottom bit stayed locked. Nope, it didn't. Okay, does the contract see that I've got all the things? Well, it says cupola optional. I hope it's really optional. Seems alright. Yeah, we lost the boosters. How annoying. Okay, I think a hundred kilometers, well, maybe a hundred and twenty kilometers would be better. Again, for rendezvous purposes. Okay, let's get the nose cone off. Off it goes. And later on we'll have a Kerbal attached docking port to that, I think. Okay, now coasting to Apoapsis. We could have had uh, this have its own little thrusters. Maybe we'll... I really need a drill. I think uh, one thing I need is to get a Kerbal uh, a Kerbal to be able to drill all these things together and use KIS and KES properly. So yeah, I need a drill. I mean, we have a wrench, I know. 
but I don't know what the exact difference is. I'm used to using the drill anyway. I feel it's more legit. Okay, 121 by 119 is fine. Okay, well. Decoupling. Aw. That bit stays? Uh, I didn't want that bit to stay on the station. I should have reversed the decoupler. Okay. Um, how is everything over here, by the way? Have we fulfilled the contract? Launch Kerbin Station. Yeah. Vessel type station. Oh, maybe I don't have the right vessel type. Hold on. Uh, rename vessel station. Accept. Okay, I think we got it. Yes, station complete. All right, so we got all the funds we needed. And that covers the failed launch as well, so we got a good fair amount there. Alright, now let's see if we can bring the engine back. This could be dodgy. Let's unlock the fuel. Start up the RCS. And I'll probably manually turn it. Okay, maybe not. Hold on. Alright, let us push ourselves away from the station. Alright, that's us re-entering. Which way should it be? Retrograde is probably the wrong way. It's prograde based on how the controller is. So we're going to go surface relative velocity plus instead of minus. Okay, let's hit the atmosphere and see what happens. It could flip around. I mean, it depends on how the center mass and center of lift is on this thing, too. Yeah, as it is, we're actually going to be on the opposite side of the planet, so we're probably not going to get too much back from this. But, hey, that's just a first test. No apparent deviation. If there's any apparent deviation, I'll turn on the RCS to help. Could have used less ablator, but I think that probably helps the balance anyway. Pretty heavy though. But then again, the engine's heavy, so gotta counterbalance that. Well, the parachutes have it oriented the right way, that's nice. Could have flipped the other way, for all I know. Down to oh, 8.4 meters per second. I thought it'd be less than that. I should have configured the parachutes a little bit more. A little bit of a rough landing here. Um, well, um, well, there's something down there. It survived. I mean, well, not exactly the way I wanted it to, though. We'll have to reconfigure the parachutes. And also bring it back closer to the KSC. But, on the whole, a positive development here. We have another way of recovering things. The boosters, though, suddenly decide not to be recoverable by crashing into each other. Okay, so we recovered that. But it was so from, far from the KSC, we only got 33% back. Alright. Well, we did the station contract. Uh, perhaps next we should go for the one around the moon. I think that makes sense. And the one around the moon has the same requirements. Four Kerbals, one launch, docking port. Needs power generation, science lab, same exact thing. Okay. So, but uh, I don't think I'll have a uh, recoverable stage in the same way or the huge fuel tanks. We'll have to do something a little bit more efficient. 
So, with just a minor modification, we have Moon Station 1, and the modification is a larger tank here, a poodle here, and that's to send us on our way to the moon and get us into orbit around the moon. Also, potentially to finish orbit around Kerbin, uh, decoupler here, obviously. And then otherwise, uh, we remove the recoverability stuff from this uh, to lighten the load, mainly. And so just a skipper and it will be expendable. And then the boosters, I really wanted to put separatrons on the boosters so that they could arrive safely on the ground thanks to stage recovery. But it does not seem like I have unlocked separatrons. We've got a lot of air augmented solid rocket boosters, lots of air augmented ones, a sky crane, and many other things, flea, gnat, uh, cricket even, but grasshopper, but yeah, no, no separatrons yet. I assume I'm gonna unlock them later. So no luck there, we'll just have to hope that they don't smash into each other. So, but I mean, you know, with the contract giving us as much credits as it is, uh, 87,000 is not that much. So it'll, it should be alright. We will still be making a net gain. So, after a little bit of fixing the staging, I'll bring it out to launch pad and we'll go. Alright, let's not waste any time. Throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Wow, that's a lot more power than I thought there would be. Oh, uh, hmm. Maybe it just seems that way. Very vigorous launch. All the SRB power, I guess. Whoa, whoa. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. It's a little wiggly even for me right now. Whoa. Despite the fins. I think I'll just keep it here for now. Okay. Separation. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they got. Oh, I, th I think they just glanced off of each other. Okay. We can do a very sharp turn now. I wasn't able to turn it as much as I would like earlier with the SRBs on. I could have probably done a better turn if I throttled down this engine, but we'll go as it is. Okay, I'll set for orbit. Okay, well, I do want this stage to re-enter. I'll let it, uh, oh, well, I'll leave it there, I think. Alright, so we'll sacrifice the 119 meters per second and let it go back down. So, separation. And... the poodle. Let's coast to Apwaps. Oh, we can dump the nose cone. That also can re-enter. Off it goes. Let's get the solar panels out. I'll have to look for a fix for window shine on the science lab. See where that is. I'm sure it's out there. Just didn't realize it was a problem. Okay, that's a good enough orbit for transfer to the moon. There we go, that looks good. Doesn't cost too much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the whole idea of, like, building the station via EVA. I hope that all goes well. I mean, I can easily imagine how it could go badly, but having the Kerbal's EVA to take stuff off and attach things on, uh, take off these silly little junior docking ports if necessary, maybe take off the Poodle engine. I don't know if they can carry it, though. Anyway, let's go. Okay, there we go. Uh, 114. 80 kilometers sounds pretty good. 80, 80 sounds about right. Okay, so we can 
do that. Looks like our solar panels will catch some good sunlight like that. Alright, let's go. Okay, getting into orbit. I wonder if it has to be any lower than this. Minmus has to be below 30,000. Um, moon station... Oh, it wants it below 60,000. Ah, that's no fun. Okay, fine, below 60,000 then. Okay, and this is... A station. And yes, we have launched a moon space station. 631,000 funds. Very good. Um, that was the expended stage with the skipper. And as far as the boosters, we got those back. 4.25 meters per second terminal velocity. So, one, two, three, four. Or did I miscount? Anyway. Okay, ocean depth record. That's interesting. I was not expecting that milestone. That was probably with the engine. Okay, so uh, we have put a makeshift station around Kerbin, one around the moon, and we are proceeding along with quite a lot of funds, and we have unlocked the R&D building. So, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.